Hello and welcome to Mathematics with Simon. I'm Simon. Today we're going to look at filters and ultra filters. Paul in France has asked us to look at this. This is a university level topic. Um, it's pretty hard. I only really understood it when I was doing my PhD. Um, but it's fascinating and it's it's can be used in all sorts of areas. We'll talk a bit about that at the end. So Firstly, what is a filter? So a filter is a collection of subsets of a set X. Um, it's closed upwards. So if F is a filter and A is in F, then every superset of A is also in F. Every bigger set is also in F. It's also closed under intersections. So if A is in F and B is in F, then their intersection is also in F. So it's sort of, if you picture it, it looks a bit like a sort of triangle or a cone with the point at the bottom, uh, if that makes sense. It does not include the empty set. So as a cone, it doesn't touch the very bottom of the power set. Um, it's a proper subset of the power set, so it doesn't contain all of the power set. If it contained the empty set, then it would contain all of the power set because Every set is a superset of the empty set. So if it contained the empty set, it would contain everything else. And we might think of a filter as containing all of those sets that we're going to think of as being big. Uh, that's the general sort of idea. So let's look at an example. The set of all sets that contain the numbers two and three. So this is a filter. So every superset of a set that contains two and three also contains two and three. And if we intersect two sets that contain two or three, that intersection will also contain both numbers. Um, but it does not include the singleton of two. It does not include all the even numbers. So it is a proper subset of the power set. And in this world, we're giving all the weight to the numbers two and three. So we're thinking of uh, sets with two and three in it as big. And we don't care about any of the other numbers. Um, we don't give them any weight at all in this model. What's an ultra filter? So an ultra filter is a filter first, uh, but it's also a maximal filter. So if we add any set to it, it will no longer be a filter because basically if we add a new set and then we intersect it with some of those other sets, we might get the empty set, which might then mean that this filter would have to be the whole power set, um, which means it can't be a proper filter. And so it's sort of this, filter is as big as an ultra filter is as big as it can get uh, without sort of falling apart really it's like a sort of big raindrop that you can't add any more water to uh, and for an ultra filter for every set s in the power set it's either in the ultra filter or its complement is in the ultra filter uh, and that's not true of normal filters so for instance this filter um, the singleton of two is not in the filter and its complement is not in the filter because its complement doesn't have two in it. So this filter is not an ultra filter, it's not maximal. This is an example of an ultra filter, the set of all sets that contain two. That's an ultra filter. So every superset of a set that contains two also contains two. The intersection of two sets that contain two also contains two. But it's not the whole power set because it does not include the singleton of three or even the set of odd numbers or the singleton of 25 or anything like that. So it's not the whole of the power set. So in this case, we're giving all of the weight simply to the number two. But the rabbit hole goes deeper. Uh, so the two examples that we've given are both principal filters. So this is a principal filter. It has a smallest element, which is the set containing two and three. And um, we can define the filter as all the sets that are bigger than that set containing two and three. And this is a principal ultra filter. Its smallest element is the set that contains two. And it can be defined as the set of all sets that are bigger than the set that contains two. Um, but there are some filters that are not principal. So, for example, if we're looking at the set of the integers, if x is a set of the integers, 
If we take the set of all cofinite sets, this is a filter. So a cofinite set is a set whose complement is finite. Um, and the set of all cofinite sets is a filter. So given a cofinite set, any superset of it is also cofinite because its complement will be even smaller. So it's still finite. Uh, the little formula I've put down here says that if we um, intersect two uh, cofinite sets, then their complement is equal to the union of the complements of the two sets. So it's still going to be finite. So uh, the intersection of two cofinite sets is also cofinite. So it stays in the filter. But it's not a principal filter. It's got no smallest element. It's got loads of really big infinite sets uh, because their, their complements are finite. So they're all infinite. So it's a very different shape to the sort of cone shape or triangular. When I say cone shaped, I guess I mean in multiple dimensions, depending on the set or the power set in which you're operating. But it's a very different shape to those kind of cone shaped filters. Uh, that we'll be discussing. But the rabbit hole goes deeper still, because if we assume the axiom of choice in the form of Zorn's lemma, then we can prove that every filter is contained in an ultra filter. So the axiom of choice is a very sort of, it's an axiom of set theory, and it took mathematicians a long time to realize that it was a non-trivial assumption. It's about the ability to make an infinite number of choices all at the same time. And Zorn's lemma is about the properties of partially ordered sets. But basically, it's the assumption that you can make an infinite number of choices at the same time. It took me a long time to get used to it. It feels complicated. Um, I remember being in a, a group theory lecture at university with a guy called Thompson, who was one of the greats in group theory. And he kind of said, well, assuming axiom of choice, this theorem is true. And I kind of said, well, is axiom of choice true? And he said, well, you know, we can't, you know, all you can say is assuming the axiom of choice, the theorem is true. Um, so it's one of those things you've either got to believe or not believe. Um, but if we assume that, then we can prove that every filter is contained in an ultra filter. So every filter can be augmented and built up to make an ultra filter. So if we start from the set of cofinite sets, what does the ultra filter containing it look like? Well, this takes some real thinking. So does it contain the set of even numbers? Well, the answer is it's a matter of choice. It might or it might not. It might contain the evens. It might contain the odds. It's not really specified. Because, of course, the even numbers are not cofinite. Um, and the odds are not cofinite. They all have complements that are infinite. Does it contain all the multiples of 4? Well, if it contains... Let's think about this. If it contains the multiples of 4, then it must contain the even numbers. Because the even numbers are a superset of the multiples of 4. So... We don't know if it contains the even numbers, all the multiples of four, but there's a sort of a link between them. And that's why we're using Zorn's lemma, not just AC. So the bottom line is there are loads of ultra filters that contain the cofinite filter. Um, and to choose one, we have to make an infinite number of choices, which is why we're using the axiom of choice. Uh, and understanding these sort of structure and nature of all those uh, ultra filters is really hard and actually beyond me at the moment, frankly, although it interests me. Um, but I know there's a lot of them, uh, put it that way. I mean, well, the number of them, I assume, is equal to the number of real numbers because it's the same as the cardinality of the power set of the integers. Um, which is the same as the cardinality of the real numbers. So I assume it's sort of of that order. Um, but I'm not totally even sure of that, but I think that's right. Um, sometimes in mathematics, it's good to be clear when you think you're right, but you're not totally sure. Um, just as a final note, 
If we assume axiom of choice, then we can prove, pr prove that every filter is contained in an ultra filter. But assuming that every filter is contained in an ultra filter does not allow us to prove the axiom of choice. So the idea that every filter is contained in an ultra filter is actually weaker than the axiom of choice. Um, this last thing we're going to delete. It actually doesn't work on this page. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Let's talk about it more. Please leave uh, comments. Uh, happy to make more videos. Everyone's welcome to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'd love to hear your ideas. And most of all, I hope you enjoy your mathematics.